All right. Hello, everybody. This week, we are talking about particle density and bulk density. Now, uh, I'm sure we should probably start then because both of these have the word density in them. We should probably just start with figuring out what is density. You might have heard the word before, but we want to maybe get down to brass tacks a little bit more. So generally speaking, density is just the amount of stuff per unit of total space. If we wanted to put that into an equation form, density is mass divided by volume. Now, those relate specifically, mass relates to the amount of stuff, specifically the weight of stuff, and volume is related to the total space. So as an example, let's start with an anvil. So that would be on one end of this kind of density spectrum. An anvil is made of pure iron, uh, and so it has a lot of mass. It's very heavy. However, an anvil is not very big, so it kind of has a low-ish volume. So if we look at our equation here, high mass on top, low volume on the bottom, we end up with a pretty high density object here. Now, on the other end of this spectrum, we would have something like a cloud. A cloud has high mass. There's a lot of water vapor in clouds, There's, but the thing is, it's spread out over a huge volume of space. So we don't really think of clouds as being particularly heavy. But uh, because it's spread out over so much space, uh, it gives us a low density object. So those are kind of two different examples that we can think of uh, just uh, when we're thinking about density as uh, you know mass and volume relationships here. Now, when we think about density in soil, it's helpful to go back to that, uh, that diagram I put together way back in week zero or week one uh, during the review. So now remember, soils are about 50% solids of which 45% is mineral. So that's uh, decomposed rock basically, about 5% is organic matter. And then we have about 50% just open space. 25% uh, of that is pores, it's filled with air or gases. And uh, maybe 25% of that is filled with liquid. So let's first talk about volume. So when we talk about the volume aspect of density in soils, what we're talking about is the total volume. We're not talking about uh, you know, just one piece of it. We want to know the total volume. And specifically, we want to know the amount of weight per total volume. So when we think about mass, um, it gets a little bit more complicated, though, in the terms of how we measure it. So the mass that we're interested in, really, in soil is we want to know the solids, the uh, mineral and organic portions. That's the amount of mass that we want. Um, but there is this liquid still in soil. And so we need to figure out a way to get rid of that liquid because that's not mass that we are really interested in in terms of uh, talking about bulk density. We want to know the bulk density of the soil, so we need to eliminate the liquid portion. So this leads us into uh, talking about just how do we actually sample and measure bulk density in soil. I'm, I decided to spare you this uh, because soil sampling just with a core was uh, difficult enough. But uh, so I'll just walk you through this so that way you don't have to actually do it yourself. So first we start with a core of known volume. So usually these are about four inches across and about five inches deep. And uh, so we know the volume of that soil core. And so we can, uh, we don't have to worry about that. We have a known amount of volume but we then want to fill that with a mass of soil. So what we do is we take that core and we hammer it into the ground. Now, when we hammer it into the ground, we wanna make it so that top edge of the soil of the bulk density core is about flush or even slightly below the surface of the soil. So it's a little tricky, uh, but you also wanna make sure that it's even, which is why uh, this guy's using a block here to uh, hammer this thing in. So up next, we want to keep that core uh, intact. So what we do is we, uh, when we take it out, so we do is we kind of excavate around it. We dig out all the soil surrounding it, uh, including a little bit below it. 
and then we get ready to extract it. So extract it, I mean, pull it out uh, and kind of disconnect it from the soil beneath it. So, but then once we have that, um, there's still soil hanging out on top of the core, which is not volume, part of our volume. So what we do is we take a knife and we level it off on both sides to make sure that we're only going to be measuring the mass that is within our volume of interest here. So remember back to our uh, issue before was that we have some of this that is actually uh, liquid, right? We have about 25% pores and we have some liquid and that liquid is uh, contributing to mass. So what we do is we put it in the oven and we evaporate all of that liquid. So all of the space that's in the soil is pores, it's empty. So it's not contributing any mass to our measurement. So then that leaves us with just this part up here. That's the mass that we're measuring. Uh, and we still have that same total amount of volume. So we put it in the oven overnight to get rid of the water and it helps us isolate for just this uh, solid mineral and organic portions of soil. So that way we know the bulk density is uh, actually just the soil. It's not uh, some liquid messing up our measurement. So this is a lot of work. So in the infamous words of Catbug, for anyone who is an Adventure Time fan, uh, why would we do that? Why would we go to all of this trouble to measure bulk density? It's a real pain, right? You have to hammer in the core, dig around it, excavate it, and then you have to put it in the oven and wait till it's completely dry then you can weigh it and you just get one number. So that's kind of a lot of work for this. So why would we go to all this trouble? Well, the answer is that um, bulk density is a good way to measure compaction or conversely aeration of the soil. Uh, things like gas exchange and nutrient flow and uh, stuff like that uh, are all uh, a result of this compaction or aeration. So let's talk about bulk density and compaction and the relationship between those. So going back to our oven dried soil core, uh, a compacted soil might look slightly different from our ideal soil. A compacted soil would maybe have more of that mineral portion in the same amount of volume and a lower amount of pore space. So that mass piece has expanded. There's more mass per unit of volume than the previous one. Um, but we haven't changed the volume. So a greater bulk density is indicative of potential compaction. It's one potential uh, way that we can get at understanding if the soil has been compacted. So why do we care about compaction? Well, in a, you didn't know it at the time, but a couple lectures ago, I actually did uh, touch on this a little bit. So if you remember, this was a picture of a drought year in England and all of these ancient kind of earthworks showed up in farmers' fields. So the, the crops are kind of uh, dry and not so green, but you can see these kind of uh, circles everywhere where they are green. And those are a result of previous drainage ditches. And uh, so, you know, they dug this up and uh, kind of eliminated a lot of the compaction which um, allows for better uh, root growth or deeper root growth. So when there's a drought, it makes it so uh, these, the plants that are over those previous drainage ditches can kind of weather that drought a little bit better. So why does that uh, decrease in compaction uh, translate to better plant growth during drought conditions? Well, it's all about porosity. So, uh, when we are talking about this compacted soil, you know, we have a lot of mineral phase in here, but we have the same amount of volume. But that porosity, which is the amount of volume occupied by pores only, is relatively small. If you think back to our previous uh, soil, where we had about 50% porosity. So uh, we want our soils to not be compacted because then we have greater porosity. And that greater porosity uh, means that uh, the soil can hold more water. Now you'll see here that there's a little asterisk because of course there always is in, in science. And um, 
there is a little bit of variation from soil texture to soil texture on that relationship. But soil texture class is um, related to both bulk density and porosity. There are trends across these. So let's start with bulk density. So we have, I just used five different textural classes here. So we have sand, which has the highest, the largest, I should say, um, particle size. Then we have loam, which is kind of in the middle, and clay has the smallest particle sizes. And you'll notice that as uh, we go from small particles down here to a greater proportion of big particles, that the bulk density increases. Now, if we think about that, it might make some sense, right? Uh, more of the total volume is going to be filled up with particles, and therefore the bulk density is higher. Now, conversely, uh, when you have more of the space that's taken up with these big particles, you have less uh, space for porosity. A lower proportion of that space is taken up by pores. And so you see an opposite trend in porosity. Sand has about 38% porosity, and a clay has about 50% porosity. So you can see that these two things are kind of trending in opposite directions. And we'll discuss this a little bit more in lecture next week about why this is important. So to review real quick, density is the amount of stuff per total unit, unit of total space. And the equation for that is uh, mass divided by volume. Bulk density is the amount of soil per unit volume. And in soils, we often express it in terms of grams per centimeter cubed. Bulk density samples are not the easiest samples in the world to gather because they need to be excavated uh, and then subsequently oven dried to remove as much water as possible. That makes it so uh, we can assume that all of the mass in our sample is mineral or organic matter and not liquid that is kind of uh, getting interfering with our measurement. But all of this uh, work is worth it because bulk density is a way of understanding and getting at compaction or aeration. Uh, those are important for root growth and therefore plant growth. Uh, porosity and bulk density uh, are inversely related to each other. Porosity is the percentage of the total volume that is made up of pores. And the more pores we have, or the greater porosity rather, um, uh, the more uh, water a soil can hold. And we'll discuss a little bit more about that next week. So uh, looking forward to it, and I will see you in class.